With the release of Affinity 3, now rebranded as Affinity by Canva, and the software being made completely free, Affinity 3 is now hands down the best free raw editor available today. No alternative comes even close. So for all those new users coming into Affinity 3, I thought it would be helpful to walk you through how to edit raw images with this powerful editor, including the top three essential tools you need to master to get standout results. But first, let's quickly cover when you should shoot raw. The first situation is high contrast scenes, things like sunsets, backlit subjects, or landscapes with deep shadows. Raw files are unprocessed and contain far more data than JPEG, so they allow for recovering more detail in bright highlights and dark shadows. The second situation is low light and night photography. Raw gives you much better shadow recovery and helps you avoid the smear details you might get with JPEG noise reduction. It's also worth noting that the best denoising tools like DxO Deep Prime and Lightroom's AI Denoise work exclusively with RAW files, so you'll always get the highest quality results when shooting in RAW. The third situation is tricky or mixed lighting. Scenes where the white balance is difficult, such as tungsten lighting, neon signs, stage lights, or colorful interiors. RAW gives you complete control to adjust white balance afterward without degrading image quality, something JPEG simply can't match. So those are some situations to shoot in the RAW format. Next, let's learn how to edit RAW files with Affinity. So here we are in Affinity 3. To start off, let's open our RAW file. I'll go to File, Open, and select the image. This brings the photo into the Develop module, which is specifically designed for processing RAW files. You can confirm it is a RAW file by checking the label at the top bar. As you can see, the image is a high contrast sunset scene which doesn't look great straight out of the camera. The highlights are blown out and the shadows overly dark. Nowhere near the dramatic view I saw that day. But that's completely normal because a raw file is unprocessed and designed to give you full manual control over the editing process. And that brings us to the first essential tool you need to know, the basic panel. This panel contains all the essential sliders for adjusting exposure, contrast, and color. Unlike similar sliders which exist within Affinity, only the basic panel fully taps into the extra data in a raw file, giving you the best looking adjustments. To demonstrate, let's balance the tones in this image. I'll start by lowering the exposure slider to bring back color and detail, and you notice how smooth and natural the transitions look as I move it. Next, I'll use the shadows and highlights slider to recover detail in both the darkest and brightest areas. And as you can see, it does the job well. Next, I'll add some clarity to sharpen details and make the image pop. To finish off, I'll use the curves tool found in the tones panel for a subtle contrast boost. By the way, if you want to learn more about curves, check out my video on that topic. And there you go, our edit is done. I'll click on the split view button to compare before and after. And as you can see, it's a big improvement, representing more of what the scene actually looked that day. Here is another example, this time of a night scene. I underexposed this shot by four stops to ensure I was able to capture the beautiful color and detail of the full moon, which is the highlight of this image. Unfortunately though, it drastically darkened everything else. No problem, since I shot the image in RAW, I have the flexibility to still recover the details simply by increasing the shadow slider. The next essential tool is the Masks panel. One issue with using the basic panel as is, is it applies adjustments globally to the entire image, which won't always give you the best results. You can see the problem here as I raise the shadow slider. The adjustment affects not just the foreground but also the sky, decreasing contrast and reducing overall image quality. For a better edit, 
it's better to apply adjustments to specific parts of an image. Fortunately, Affinity makes this possible with the Masks panel. I'll reset the adjustments and go to the Masks panel, which by the way used to be called the Overlay panel, so this is a good change to make the label less confusing. I'll click on the Gradient tool. As you can see, this adds a new layer to the panel. I'll drag the control represented by a red overlay to cover the foreground. I'll increase the exposure. And you can see the adjustment is now being applied to just the area covered by the gradient, correctly excluding the sky. Next, I'll target the sky. I'll click the gradient tool once again. I'll drag the control from the top down to the horizon and reduce the exposure. And this gives us a similar effect to using a physical graduated filter. Next, I'll make the surfboard stand out a bit more by adding yet another gradient. This time though, I'll switch the gradient type from linear to elliptical since we are targeting a specific object rather than the entire image width. I'll position the control so it covers just the surfboards, then increase the exposure and the saturation to make it pop. By the way, one great thing about using masks in Affinity is that all adjustments are completely non-destructive. This means I can go back to any mask layer at any time, as I'm doing here, and all the controls are still fully accessible, allowing me to refine or change the edit without degrading image quality. I'll warm up the sky by increasing the white balance. Finally, I'll use the crop tool to level the image. And there, the edit is done. Let's move on to a second example. Once again, I'll start off by fixing the exposure. Unfortunately, the subject is still in deep shadow. To fix this, we need to make a precise adjustment to just the subject without affecting the background. Unfortunately, the gradient mask with its lack of position won't work here. Thankfully, the Masks panel provides an alternative, a brush mask. I'll click on the tool. I'll enable edge detection. I'll brush over the subject. As you can see, the brush does a fairly decent job of keeping the mask within the edges. I'll increase the exposure. Unfortunately, there are some errors. No problem. I'll use the Mask Erase tool to refine the mask. The third essential tool is the Details panel. This panel is perfect for adding final touches to your edits. Let's start off by editing the image and balancing the tones. There, the edit looks good. Unfortunately though, if we zoom in, you'll notice some problems. The shadow areas have quite a bit of noise. So how do we fix this? That's where the details panel comes in. I'll navigate to the panel. Unfortunately though, you'll notice the sliders are disabled and that's because the details panel doesn't work on a masked layer. No problem, I'll switch the selected layer to master, which makes sure all the adjustments apply to the entire image. Now, heading back to the Details panel, the sliders are now active. I'll increase the Luminance slider just enough to clean up the grain without overly smearing the details. Another key feature of this panel is sharpening, which I always recommend applying since raw files aren't sharpened by default. And that completes the edit. To export the image, I'll click Develop to return to the Pixel module, then go to File, then export. So that's how you edit raw files with Affinity 3. I hope you found this video helpful. While it does have its limitations, for example, there is no AI masking built in, as in Luminar, On1, or Photolab, among many other limitations, there's no reason you can't achieve impressive edits by maximizing its toolset. So let me know if you have any questions or comments on editing RAW with Affinity 3. 
write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.